Today on the Metal Ribbon Channel, we're going to be talking about portable roll forming safety precautions. Welcome to the Metal Ribbon Channel. Today we're going to be talking about portable roll forming safety precautions. I'm Jeff Hawk with Sheffield Metals. Today again, we have Ben Bradley from New Tech Machinery, and we're going to go over some of the common safety tips that you should keep in mind when you're running one of these machines. First off, off the bat, I think we commented this in a different video, but it's always important to read your manual when it comes to running these machines. Knowing what's in the manual, knowing the idiosyncrasies of the machine that you're using is, is really important when it comes to operating one of these. And the person who's operating it or helping it should be familiar with the manual and what's in it. Number two is being trained by somebody proficient on the roll farmer, whether it is a manufacturer's representative whether you're a new person in the shop and you're gonna be taking over for somebody that might be running the panel machine, uh, having them train you and right. doing it properly. Um, that doesn't always get to be the case because people end up leaving and then somebody needs to step up and run a machine, but there's nobody there to train them that previously ran it. So, right. you know, if that is the case, reach out to your manufacturer, see what they can't do to help you out as far as formal training and that's probably the two best safety precautions I can give you through this whole video. Yes, I would agree. Machine has covers. When the machine's operating, you wanna make sure you have the covers on, not only for the care of your machine, but for the care of yourself as well. Safety of your personnel, safety of anyone else around the machine. Absolutely. So, um, another big one is knowing where the emergency stops are on the, on the machine. We have one main one, it's a big red button, but if I know where it is and you don't, and I'm the one in trouble, it's important that he knows where it's at. So that's, that's a big one too, is knowing how to turn the machine off and stop what's going on. You know, things getting caught in the machines, if it does happen, things like jewelry, uh, chains, rings, things like that, long hair, um, you want to make sure long hair is restrained, pretty much anything that could get caught in the machine to take you with it, you want it, you want it off your person. Another big one is the guillotine. Yes, the, the shear is a hydraulically powered shear on, on this piece of equipment and a lot of other roll formers out there, so which is a very dangerous end of the machine. Obviously, hands, um, clothing, anything that is important to you, you want to keep away from that shear blade. That's a that's good. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Anything that's important to you, you want to keep it away from there because right. it, it doesn't care what's inside it of it. Not it's, care. it's going down one way or the other. Um, good common practice. Um, working on the machine, especially around the shear or the drives have the machine obviously turned off with the e-stop button. And if there's an electric machine with a power cord, or in our case, the yellow cord going from the power pack to the blue box, you can disconnect that. And that prevents the machine from being turned on accidentally by someone else that may not know you're working in a machine. Obviously safety is dealing with the heavy coils. Always have to be uh, careful with loading and unloading those because that can be a potential hazard. So have your However, you are managing lifting that coil, just make sure it's a good safe practice. Yep. Using properly rated equipment, making sure that the equipment can handle the weight of the coil that's being dealt with, mm -hmm. making sure that there's people not by the, by the equipment as it's being lifted into place. So if there's anything falls, it falls on the ground and not on somebody. Um, yep, that's a very good point to make. Another thing you want to do is you don't want to make any alterations to the machine. Uh, the machine comes from the factory set up to run as it's intended. Uh, if um, owner of a machine starts making changes that aren't approved by the original equipment manufacturer, it could cause problems, uh, whether it be electrical, mechanical, if something gets damaged and you need a replacement, contact the manufacturer and then get a replacement that's made for the machine instead of you know trying to alter something and do it yourself. Another thing you want to have when you're working on the machine in general and the metal that we're dealing with that we're producing out of this machine is your, you know, your PPE, your personal protection. Gloves that are rated to make sure you don't get cut when handling material, safety glasses, so if anything does come out of the machine for whatever reason, you know, your eyes are protected, uh, long pants, sometimes you know people require long sleeves depending on the area that you're working in, so the proper PPE for your area and the project that you're doing, you, know, you wanna make sure you have all that available as well. A lot of time these, this equipment is out in the parking lot or along the side of the road. So maybe some orange vests or some cones or anything around the machine to help 
people see that you are working. Uh, that's a good point. Another thing that you want to take in consideration is the type of the materials that's formed through the machine. Right. Um, as a machine manufacturer, we specify what the machine can handle as far as materials and widths and size of coils on top of the machine. So you want to stay within those specifications. So the machine will a last you a long time to uh, for your investment, and so you don't cause any damage or to the machine or to anyone operating. Another thing to take into consideration is what type of engine your machine has, whether it's running off a gas power pack or an electric power pack. If you are outdoors and you're running a gas power pack, that's fine. But if you're in an enclosed warehouse, you want to make sure you have some way to vent those fumes. Um, if you're running an electrical power pack indoors, obviously that's not going to be an issue. But you don't want anybody getting sick or passing out or things like that from the fumes that the gas engine creates. Also, uh, maintenance on your machine. Not annual, but weekly, taking a look at the machine, maintaining the machine, not only gets you into the machine so you can see what's going on, um, but it also helps prevent uh, issues down the road where you might need to um, actually physically work on the machine and change parts out, which is then a potential for a safety issue. So, and again, that could be found in your manual as far as maintenance, scheduled hours, things like that. Correct. So again, all the steps that we've talked about throughout this have all gone back to step number one, checking your manual, seeing what it says, and again, you know, having somebody properly train you on the machine, and those are those are really gonna be your two biggest safety precautions throughout this, besides just common sense acts. So obviously this isn't a complete list of every safety precaution you should keep in mind when you're working on a machine, and your safety precautions are gonna change depending on what it is you're doing, whether you're switching out tooling, performing maintenance on a machine, or roll forming the panels themselves. I mean, there's safety that you need to think about when you're towing the machine down the street, as far as you know how your machine's hooked up and everything else. So again, this isn't a complete list of safety precautions. These are some basic things to keep in mind. You should always refer to the safety precautions set forth by the original ma manufacturer and you know the employer that you work for, or if you're if you're the employer, set your own safety measures forth to keep your employees safe. So I think we covered a lot of information here. I want to say thanks to Ben for coming out. I want to say thanks to New Tech. If you have any questions, comment down below, subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel, and we'll see you next time.